Hey guys, I'm Shaman. This is Yolanda, and that's Hobbs. That's Hobbs. <laughs> He's, He's laying so on the couch, cute. chilling out, which is what he does during most of your day. I mean, yes. <laughs> he can usually be found on the couch. But we've been talking about burnout. We have. We have. All month long. All month long. And there's a lot that goes with burnout. Yeah, because it's such a such a thing for um, people in our society. Right. Uh, we talked about kind of burnout in a work context and how that's expanded to our personal lives. Mm -hmm. We talked about um, my own experience with burnout and um, my process of what I call a soul sabbatical. And the book you've written about it? And the book that I've written about it. So go to YolandaHarper.com if you want more information about that. Um, so my sabbatical to address the burnout that I was feeling um, was a period of time on a calendar. Mm -hmm. And um, since that period of time on a calendar, it's also become just things that I've incorporated into my everyday. Right moments of nourishing my soul mm -hmm. and mm, understanding of the things that was underneath what led to the burnout right right um and we talked a little bit about how you know our culture is just such that we're expected to work all of these long hours without right. taking care of ourselves right i mean we wear like a badge of honor you know we i yeah. do more than anybody else i work yeah. harder i you know yeah we we glorify those things for some right. reason which is a horrible practice right well I mean it comes at a cost is right. what is what is important to notice like we can do that and we have been doing that right but that's one of the reasons why we're exhausted and we're irritable and, and overwhelmed not sleeping and overwhelmed it's right. a reason it's a reason for um, the number of divorce in in our society it's a big reason for the number of heart attacks and health issues that, stress levels right yeah. that we have in anxiety. our society I think you said anxiety. it's a lot it has a lot to do with um, our experience of anxiety and depression right um, so it does it just comes at a cost absolutely right um, and things are looking different right since the pandemic in our work mm -hmm. environments it's a different world it's a totally different world People are working remote where they hadn't been. Right. There's some flexibility in the work that they do that wasn't there before. Um, employees are, are really demanding, like we want respectful cultures to work in, we want representation, we want diversity, yep. we want a safe place to work. Um, and these are all good and important shifts but we're still feeling burnout. <laughs> right, burnout's not going away. As a matter of fact, it's getting worse. So what's up with that? Right. Um, so today, uh, the topic of our conversation is what will you quit? Maybe you did quit a job during the great resignation that happened. I did. <laughs> um, you know, maybe there are certain um, parts of your job that you quit if you didn't quit the position itself. Right. Um, but we talked all month about how a soul sabbatical addresses some of the things that are underlying um, our burnout and right. our and our feeling of um, just exhaustion. Mm -hmm. um, and so I'd like to talk. I'd like to really kind of finally talk through some of those things mm -hmm. today, right? Some of those things that are underlying it. Um, so the first one is overfunctioning. Yeah. Who are my fellow overfunctioners? Again, there's a type of us, right? If you tend to be more type A, <laughs> super hyper-focused, driven kind of personality type, um, well, by personality or, or by kind of your environment, right. um, those learnings kind of come from both. Uh, but an over-functioner is like when things get stressful, boy, you kick into high gear. Right. You're gonna, you are in problem solving mode. Right. You're gonna work it to the point where it's fixed. You're gonna work it until it's until it's fixed. Right. Or until you pass out. Or whichever you crash, one right. whichever one comes first. Right. So the metaphor that I like to use with over functioning, because this is what it feels like for me, is like you're you're just throwing spaghetti noodles against the wall. Right. 
but instead of waiting to see if any of those spaghetti noodles stick, you've already got four other pots of water boiling. Right, because you just gotta keep going. You can't stop. Right. And if your if your stove has six burners and you have six burners, right. six pots of spaghetti, and you're wishing you had two more burners, and you're wishing you're like, how do I set up another two burners right. here? So, um, you are just like spinning into a place of trying to control things mm -hmm. um, that ends up controlling people. You end up getting irritable. People are not very happy with you. Right. Um, and it's exhausting, right. right? It's a big piece of what can lead to exhaustion and burnout. Um, the flip side of over-functioning is under-functioning. Right. And that is like total crash and burn, like somebody else is going to take care well, of yeah, it. Yeah, it's like you're just paralyzed through. Yeah. You can't do anything. Yeah. Right. So if that kind of helps to give a context about what over-functioning is, the opposite is like curling up in a ball and doing nothing. Absolutely. Yeah. So again, over-functioning is a big piece of what led to my burnout, what mm -hmm. leads to a lot of our burnout. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the next one, perfectionism. It's another thing, another piece you, you've got going on there. <laughs> Hi, yeah. I'm Yolanda. I'm recovering perfectionist. <laughs> um, I think it's important to talk about the difference, though, between healthy striving and perfectionism. And perfectionism, right? Because I like healthy striving is a thing. Yeah, yeah. Let's no, go let's, for it. Yeah, let's do the best we can. Yeah, right. yeah. I'm gonna put my best foot forward. Uh -huh. I'm gonna put my full effort into it. Right. Um, but I'm going to stop short of expecting things to be perfect. Right. Perfectionism is a whole different level of insanity on top of that. It just doesn't, it just simply doesn't exist. Right. Um, it ends up becoming a process addiction because, you know, we're like, if I can make things more perfect, then mm -hmm. everything will work out smoothly. Right. Um, and when that doesn't work, because it doesn't, because we're human and there's no such thing as being perfect. Right. Um, we think, we don't think, well, that perfectionism thing didn't work. We think, oh, I just need to try harder next time. Right. It, we, we, you, know, you can't fault the process. You can't fault anything. Right. I did everything right because you know you're caught in how it's all perfect. Right. And well, apparently I did something wrong, so we got to go yeah. back and do it again. And it, right. perfectionism always leaves you questioning, like, did I did I really get it perfect enough? <laughs> like, right. I, I thought that I did, but maybe I didn't. Maybe right. I should go back and look again. Right. Right. Again, exhaustion. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm just tired in my body just thinking about it. Right. And a really bad combination is overfunctioning and perfectionism. <laughs> yes. 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 These all kind of weave together. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> These all kind of weave together. Um, the next thing that really impacts us kind of on the, the deeper level that is underneath the burnout is the hustle. Mm. You all know what I'm talking about. We live in a hustle culture. We do. We do. Hustle harder, like all of the mantras and, and all of that kind of stuff. Um, and we end up working 12 hour days mm -hmm. and, and being told or we tell ourselves that that's not enough. Mm -hmm. um, and we keep on that hamster wheel because we're terrified that if we step off of it, then everything will come crumbling right. down. Right. Because we tell ourselves the story that we're only successful because we've hustled so much. Right. Which is, I mean, it's sad, but that's kind of like an American yeah, story. Yeah, like, yeah, it can't be. We yeah. love that concept of, yeah. man, I just hustled my way to the top. Mm -hmm. But you killed yourself getting there. And again, it, it, comes, at a, it comes at a cost, right. right? And I am not saying don't work hard. Right. I am not Hustle saying... Hustle is different than working hard. Right. Yes. Put your best effort in forward. our context here. Yes, right. yes, yes. Work hard, work hard, and also rest hard. Right. And also pull back hard. Right. You know, um, acknowledge when the work time is done. Right. Um, you know, I, I have a mantra that I, I can use sometimes at the end of the day or that I need to use it sometimes at the end of the day. I'm like, all of your jobs are done. Right. You know, we've talked about a never-ending to-do list, a never-ending work to-do list, a never-ending yeah. home to-do list. Like It never goes away. At some point, you just have to draw the line and say, for today, all the jobs are done. There's right. always going to be the to-do list. Um, so I mentioned that they're all kind of intertwined, but mm -hmm. these next two definitely are. 
comparison and imposter syndrome. Right. We love to compare ourselves to everybody else. And I mean, even though they're struggling and can't keep it together either, but we feel like we're, we can't keep it together as well as they can. Yeah. And it's like this yeah. weird... Hello, social media. Hello, right. like all the things, right? Right. Um, and so instead of like focusing on what we can do and doing our best... Mm-hmm. Um, we look to the left and to the right and we're like, oh crap, what I'm doing isn't anything like what they're doing. Right. And then we think, oh wow, I better step it up five notches because, oh, I'm about to be found out. You know, that's right. the imposter syndrome. Someone's going to know like, somebody's that my gonna stuff's find not out together. That, right. I'm, that I'm just faking it, right? right? Again, exhaustion, mm-hmm. <laughs> burnout. Yeah. Um, and so some of this is some of what it underlies um, the behaviors that lead to burnout right so which one of these do you really resonate with yeah all of them yeah i was gonna say some elements of all of them yeah 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 yeah. and um which ones are you ready to resign from i'd like to say all of them (laughs) i wish that it was like a categorically like like i quit literally you write that i quit you know the resignation letter and what i'm finding or what i have found is that it's a it's a regular thing like this is part of my process is reminding myself oh that's one of those things that i am choosing not to do anymore right because it doesn't benefit me right it doesn't benefit the people in my life right so um another little tip of just taking five minutes in your day to pause, take a breath, and check in with how any and all of these things are impacting your life so that you know you can make some different decisions. Right. If you need support with this, this is something that the therapists here at Harper Therapy are really great at. Like we've said, we've been seeing quite a bit of it. Um, Keep an eye out on the release of the book coming up this fall. Mm-hmm. Um, if you would like to pre-order, you can go to YolandaHarper.com or if you would like to get um, notification um, uh, from the email list on updates about the book and tips for how to carry forward a soul sabbatical in your own life, you can sign up for the newsletter there. Sounds good. So, thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Have a good one. <laughs>